let the wine be what it is. We don't try and manipulate it. And it's its own story. What we see on the vine is what you get in the glass. Every night, this valley sucks in fog. This cool climate's very similar to Burgundy, so it's perfect for growing Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. And so that's what we grow. Being truly, truly organic, we understood what we were doing. And again, it was more authentic to what, what we are. We're going for a light-bodied, yet full wine. Um, a lot of chefs, restaurants love our wine because First of all, you, can, you have a bottle of the wine and your head's not exploding at the end. And it's just, uh, I'll characterize it as, as, as easy drinking, but it's complex and, and, and interesting. If you let things adjust back and get rid of the use of pesticides, you're creating then something that's, that's fully authentic. Everything becomes, I think, better tasting, much much healthier. It's like going to the farmer's market and you're getting that blueberry and it's like, it's not this mass-produced, created food, but it's just something that came off a bush and it tastes better and you feel better about it. The more a vine struggles, the less fruit it's putting out and the more characteristic um, you'll have out of the grapes that come off of it. We're a grower-producer. So we grow the grapes and we produce the wine. Our total objective is having the best wine we can. And so we can farm to that balance of where you get the absolute best fruit because you can't make great wine with good fruit. You have to have great fruit and you end up with, with a great wine. It's delicious at harvest time. You know, you just half the time you're, you're going through and filling your mouth with, with the fruit. We know, again, the cleanest fruit we can goes in, and, and that's a process. The whole family's there. We got great music cranking, and it's just a great therapeutic, fun time to just talk and sort and look at the beauty of what you've done. We went out and bought a, a 1940s old French press that we sourced through some friends in, in Champagne, and that's, that's what we're using in a, this old basket press. What comes off the vine goes in the press and it either goes to barrel or it goes into tank and we add nothing. What clicked at that point in time was raising our kids. I look at Tommy, who's my oldest. I, I tried really hard when he was five years old to get him into this local private school, you know, because this was the right thing for him to do. And then, you know, Little League, you know, boy, my kid's going to be on the all-star team and looking at the right place to send him to college and really trying to craft this life. Everything that I had in this perfect plan for Tommy, it just didn't quite work out. He took he took his own path. Thank God he didn't turn out like I wanted him to turn out because he's he's this different you know fabulous person. And it, you know with each of my kids I had these these visions and plans, and four kids that are just so completely different, so totally awesome. It was sort of the aha with with wine. I'm trying to create this wine. I'm going to strategically do it, and. I listened to this story of all these people who have been in this for generation and generation, and they just said, you know, that's the American way of thinking. And it's, it's no, you've, you're right when you talk about your kids and it, let the wine be what it's gonna be, be where it's from, and because you're just gonna screw it up, Bill. <laughs> My wife Cindy was going through a, a transition in her life, becoming an empty nester, and she jumped into this kind of just full force. It created this, this purpose, this shared passion, her being a partner to, to my dream and my respect for her and, and my love is just, you know, it's, it's like this new romance because I'm so incredibly proud of 
what she's accomplished being a woman in wine, which is traditionally, a, you know, a man's business. The vineyard project started bringing everybody back together. I'm driving up to the vineyard from, from work, you know, go up every weekend, and I get on the phone with Tommy, and for two and a half hours of the drive, we're talking nonstop about what are we gonna do here and this type of grape and what's this producer doing. And I may have talked to him once every three months or four months, and then we're starting to talk two, three times a week for hours, and you know, we just became great friends again. Grant, next sundown, um, started design business. He started designing, working on the labels and the marketing and the website. Annie's going to school up in, in San Francisco, and she's going out and running the, the wine events, and Jeffrey's coming around and helping me rebuild the tractors and mowers and things like this, and it gave us a, a purpose to come back together as, as a family. Sitting around at one in the morning by the campfire with the entire family, singing songs and drinking our wine, and, and it's like, ah, that's as good as it gets. This allows me to celebrate the people I'm with, celebrate my friends, my family, and, and how lucky we all are with all of this, because it, bottom line, just incredibly lucky to be able to, to do this.